Subscribe to the Raiders Report for the best coverage around the Las Vegas Raiders all season long. And hopefully you join me and producer Jeremy Chuggs because we're going to have one hell of a time for the Raiders Hall of Fame game up against the Jacksonville Jaguars. We're going to get started about 15 minutes before kickoff, so join the party. It's going to be a good time. Hit that sub button, y'all, because I'm going to be looking for you. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Board. We got a really jam-packed show today. We're going to get into the latest around Leatherwood because a lot of the news reports out there have not been too positive on the former first-round pick in the 2021 draft. Then, because those reports are negative, I'm going to look at some potential trade destinations if the Silver and Black decide to move on from him. The wide receiver three battle. We knew Adams, we knew Renfro were there, but there's a lot of other players right now, and I think it's a four-person race. We're going to all also talk about some players that the Raiders brought in for workouts and then more training camp news that happened today. But let's get into the very first story here on the show. Leatherwood, he's not going to start this season. I'm going to give this one three just win babies. And in terms of not starting at the season, I should probably clarify that. Week one, you always see injury stuff can happen. But if the season were to start today, I don't see Leatherwood being that starting right tackle option. And this has been a story that's been circulating around there from Vic Tafer. A lot of other people have been covering it. Hell, I've been talking about it as well. But what Tafer said I thought was kind of interesting, it's Brandon Parker's job to lose. I then followed that up this weekend with a tweet that said, Brandon Parker's job to lose should be a Halloween costume because that is terrifying to me. I have always told her that I don't view Leatherwood as being a tackle option. But I've also said I do not want to go into the regular season with Brandon Parker as your only starting right tackle option. That scares the absolute heck out of me. And there's been a few people that have said Leatherwood has sounded defeated on Saturday when he talked to the media. He did and he didn't. If you've watched more Leatherwood interviews, he's not very charismatic or he's not very enthusiastic. He's very monotone, which is what you saw. But I read more of the body language. The body language to me did look like he was a little bit defeated. Now, this is what Leatherwood had to say on earning that right tackle battle. I basically try not to get too high or too low. Just stay grounded. I'm human. We all have our ups and downs, but I'm good. Nothing really specific, but just improve my game as a whole. Pass pro and the run game. You can never be perfect in the game, so always work on everything. So here's my question, because the Raiders report is built on interaction. It's built on, I want y'all to go down in the comment section right now. And you know what? We're going to make this the pinned comment on today's show. So you're about to get hit with a YouTube ad break. Scroll on down. Let me know who's going to start at right tackle. Type AL for Alex Leatherwood or BP for Brandon Parker. So I'm going to say it's going to be Brandon Parker's job. And... I get it. This guy is a big old guy, and I think Carmen Brousseau likes that. Has he improved his footwork? Yes. Yes, he has. But I watched Parker last year. I watched Parker the year before that. I studied Parker before he first came out into the NFL draft and was a surprise pick in the second round. I have never been a big fan of him. Is he a good backup swing tackle? Yes. But if we are legitimately going to go into the regular season, with Parker as our starting right tackle, it makes me want to scream from the heavens, please sign Daryl Williams. So with Parker potentially and probably starting at tackle, what exactly does that mean for Leatherwood? And the way I would look at it is like, okay, if this regime didn't draft him, if this regime is already bumping him down a little bit in terms of a depth chart, could you potentially move on and trade Leatherwood? My thing is this, should the Raiders do it, I would give it two just win babies. Do I think it's going to happen? Probably not, right? But in terms of should they trade Leatherwood, I've said that he's never going to be a reliable right tackle in the NFL. He just doesn't have the footwork to make it happen. And at this level, you need to have everything. Then on top of that, not only is Brandon Parker getting the first team reps, but Thayer Munford was getting reps over Leatherwood on Saturday. Now, he could still play offensive guard in this league, but in terms of right tackle, it's not going to happen. I tweeted this out on Saturday that Munford was getting reps at right tackle with the first and second team. I do think that there's a part of that of they have the Hall of Fame game coming up. I don't know how many starters we're going to see out there on the field, so you could just see a situation where this regime 
drafted Munford in the seventh round. Really good lineman out of Ohio State. I had him as a fifth round grade personally. But it sounds like he's doing better than Alex. And that's an issue for me. Because when you look at the Raiders starting offensive line, or I guess offensive line depth chart, this is what I think it would end up being. Now, yes, Lester Cotton is still getting the majority of the first team reps at right guard, but I think that's because Parham has a lot more flexibility and they know that they can use him at left guard. They could technically use him at center, at right guard. But from what it sounds like right now, this offensive line is still very much in the air. So here's your opportunity to go down in the comments and let me know, be the general manager, be Dave Ziegler. Should the Raiders trade away Leatherwood? I want you to type T for trade and... I want you to type P for pass. My take on moving on from Leatherwood is personally, I'm not ready to give up on him yet. When you talk about your first coach in the NFL being Tom Cable, I'm like, all right, I'll give you a pass. Now you're learning a new blocking scheme a little bit. I have a lot of confidence in Carmen Brasillo. But what I am going to say is if your only use for him is at right tackle, I'm ready. Move on. Ship him away. If you give him the opportunity to play guard, because very similar to Andre James last season, I thought the more and more reps James got at center, the better at center he became. I thought the more and more reps Leatherwood got at guard, the better he started to look. And if you actually put a halfway decent tackle next to Leatherwood, who knows, he might actually turn into a halfway decent prospect. Here's the issue, though. If you move on from Leatherwood, it doesn't really cost you all that much. Now, he's got a $3.3 million cap hit this season. If the Raiders trade him, it's a $1.96 million dead cap hit. Yes, you save $1.3 million. If you're moving on from a former first-round pick already, you're ultimately going to look at it as a loss. But then over the next two seasons, 2023 and then 2024, you save $8.5 million over the final two years. So a total of nine point eight. The way that I would look at that $9.8 million and say is, okay, if I'm saving that 9.8 and then I'm also not confident in a player like Cleveland Furl, I could say, well, I'm going to end up saving that money. You can also then cut Clee because you're going to eat almost $10 million in that. It could be an opportunity. But if we're going to talk about trades, you got to look at what teams could potentially make the move for Leatherwood or actually need him on the offensive line. For me, there's five teams that pop out. The Dolphins, the Falcons, Seahawks, Titans, I can make all arguments that they still need a right tackle and they need interior guard help. The Chicago Bears, on the other hand, they have a right tackle, but they could still use some interior offensive line play. It's why two weeks ago I said, hey, Denzel good to Chicago is a trade I would have because that team needs interior play, and I knew something fishy was going on with Denzel, but that is besides the point. These are the five teams, though, and a lot of times someone's like, all right, well, what would it cost to do a trade? If any five of these teams, hell, if any team in the NFL, maybe minus one of the AFC West teams, offered me a third-round pick for Leatherwood, I would take it. Does it suck? Yes. But I had him as a second-round grade as an offensive guard. You were trying to put him in a position that I do not think is ever going to happen. So a third-round pick for Leatherwood? Yeah. Guess what? I would take it. Coming up next here on the Raiders Report, Raiders quarterback Derek Carr was talking about the wide receiver three battle. We know Devontae Adams is that dude. We know Hunter Renfro is one of the best, if not the best slot receiver in the league. But who's going to win that wide receiver three battle? I'm going to tell you who has the leg up on the competition. But before I get into that, we also put videos out on Locals. And I'm actually going to be live a little bit later today. So you can scan that QR code right there for more expanded access to not only Raiders content, but also you get extra access to me as well. I put out this fun little video last week, which was two Raiders deep sleepers to make the 53-man roster. And with an injury that happened today, I actually think one of these players has an even better chance now of potentially making that 53-man. You can join us at RaidersReport.Locals.com. And if you are watching this on Sunday, shout out to all y'all. I'm going to be going live on Locals. It's free to watch. Please tune in. And that's going to be at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific, which is right on par for when I usually go live on Tuesdays as well. All right, let's talk about DC and how impressed he is with the wide receivers because that's been a very heavily topic, I guess, on this show and a lot of other Raiders podcasts out there. Is he impressed? Yes, this one is for just win, babies. Believe it, baby. And this is a good sign because in order for you to take that next step, the Raiders have a good offense. The offensive line sure is a major question mark. 
but I don't want to just be a top 10 offense. I want to be top five, hell. I want to be the best offense in the league. And when Derek spoke about his receivers on Saturday, he seemed very pleased, and he also wasn't afraid to not only hype up the receivers, but when you listen to him talk about the corners, he was calling them, you know, very sticky. And I've been told by people that Rocky Sin looks good. Anthony Averett looks good. The Raiders secondary is looking good, which then also means if the receivers are looking good, it's that whole iron sharpen iron type of thing, which for me as a Raiders fan makes me excited. And I can't wait to see what some of these guys are able to do out there on the field. Now, in terms of core, he did mention three receivers, but there's been another guy who's been looking pretty damn good as far as I'm concerned at training camp. The first guy was Keelan Cole, and DC was like, hey, this guy can run really, really clean routes, which is what I told you why I believe he's the favorite to win it because of his route running ability. Carr talked about Demarcus Robinson and said he's got a lot of speed and you know, sort of joked about how he roasted the Raiders in years past, but also has that inside track at the AFC West. He brought up Matt Collins and was just kind of like, this dude is a, I don't want to jinx him, I was going to say a Swiss Army knife, but every time I've used that term, it's been not good. He's just playing all over the field. He's going to be a red zone threat. He looks impressive as an outside receiver. He's the best special teams option out of those three receivers. And then... Tyron Johnson, I see that he's liking my tweets from a month ago about potentially cutting him, but you know what? I got to give him credit. He's got a lot of speed. He continues to show that not only is he a downfield threat, but today he caught a really nice red zone touchdown. So if the Raiders are using him in the deep passing game and the Raiders are using him in the red zone and he has that connection, which technically already one year extra of that chemistry with DC compared to these other guys, I think he deserves to be in this battle now of who's going to be that wide receiver three behind Adams, behind Renfro. So here's the question. Who's going to get it? Who's going to get the nod? Is it going to be Keelan Cole type KC, Demarcus Robinson, DR, Matt Collins type MH, or is it going to be Tyron Johnson type TJ? And if you've watched this show before, my rankings probably haven't changed too much. It's been Matt Collins, Demarcus Robinson, which have been flipped. But if you were to ask me right now what I believe the, the battle is here for that spot, I'd say Keelan Cole's in first, Matt Collins is in second, Demarcus Robinson in third, Tyron Johnson still in fourth. But in my past 53-man roster projection videos, I've kept only five receivers. I'd probably end up keeping six. And the only reason why Johnson is below Robinson is is because of the money and the investment the Raiders made in Demarcus Robinson. Now, the Raiders, they brought in a few players this past week in terms of overall workouts. And the reason why they did this is because you have to bring players in to see how they're doing. Sometimes it happens with injuries, but also the Raiders have that Hall of Fame game. They have the extra preseason game. And I know a lot of you are like, who the heck is Amari Cobb, Curtis Bolton, Jordan Evans, Master Teague, Max Borgie? And some of you are like, well, why are they bringing in all these extra running backs? They're bringing in the extra running backs. That way you don't see Josh Jacobs, Kenyon Drake, Zamir White, and Brandon Bolden in the preseason game. They want to have these extra depth. But out of these five players with the injury that happened today to Micah Kaiser, which I will get into a second, I believe Jordan Evans, out of the list of guys here, has the highest chance of joining the team. Now, I make a lot of videos. We put something out literally every single day. I think it was, what, Friday on my off day. I put out three videos instead of just one so you can always hit me up on ig you can hit me up on twitter because i'll tell you what twitter has been an absolute shit show for raiders youtubers out there i know a lot of people are coming for us but i believe at the end of the day they know they can't do what we do and jealousy is one hell of a thing here's the other cool part about twitter if you tweet a video and you hold it down it credits them automatically i know mind-blowing. Let's talk about some Raiders storylines from today at training camp. I thought this was a really cool thing because Josh McDaniels to me has proven that he's a professional and he is really disciplining these players and expects a lot from them. Also, he's going to be taking them to the Hall of Fame on Wednesday, which the Raiders, they fly in on Tuesday. They're going to visit the Hall of Fame on Wednesday. Then they got that Hall of Fame game on Thursday. I like that from Coach Josh McDaniels. The next thing then, they're going to have practice today. You got practice tomorrow. Then you take a plane. Then you head on over to Canton, get ready for that game. Also, you might see some starters versus Jacksonville. I know a lot of these preseason games are 
hard to put a finger on, but in terms of some guys who didn't practice today, according to my notes, Roderick Teamer, Anthony Averett wasn't out there, Darius Phillips, Amik Robertson, Rocky Sin, Chandler Jones, Cleveland Furl, Darius Phillips, Darren Waller, Britton Brown. So some of these guys didn't practice today. Maybe they're getting a little bit of rest, but the fact that you might see some starters makes me a little bit excited for my watch party. Here's the bad news today. Micah Kaiser. Micah Kaiser was carted off the field, and I watched the injury. It looks like one of those where you're not 100% sure how it happened, but anytime the cart comes out, your gut sinks a little bit because not only did the Raiders lose Kyler Fackrell for the season, who was going to be an outside linebacker, Micah Kaiser to me probably was the sixth guy on the overall rotation, also offers some special teams on some special teams value. And, you know, if anything else realistically happens around Kaiser, I'll try to keep you guys up to date because if he is done for the season, this could help out a player like Darian Butler end up making the team. And then another injury that is scaring me a little bit is Chandler Jones because he missed again today. And that's three straight practices. If you miss three straight, I, I get that you want to sometimes give a veteran a day off, but three straight tells me that there is actually something here. So if you haven't seen my Kyler Fackrell replacement video yet, because I put out a lot of linebackers, a lot of edge rushers in that group, with the injuries to Kaiser and the concern around Chandler Jones, I personally think that they need to make a move. Also, very, very sad news here as I'm getting ready to wrap up the show. It's not anything Raiders related, but one of the players that I think a lot of people are respecting overall in sports, Bill Russell, he actually just passed away at age 86. So if you guys could type those RIPs, I think at the end of the day, you always look for people who compete at the highest level and championships is what you're always looking at. So very, very sad news there that Bill Russell has passed away at age 88, excuse me. So everyone, type those RIPs. And if, as always, if anything happens around the silver and black, we'll keep you up to date here on the Raiders Report.